Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the Epson 8550 again, which is Epson's flagship EcoTank machine. Now, I've already done a video on this a while ago and looking back at it, I wasn't really too happy with it. Now, we didn't really get the production of it quite right, but I hope the content was there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to revisit this printer now, say 18 months on from its release, because we've been hearing really good things about this printer and I wanted to get one back from Epson and they very kindly dropped one off to me yesterday. And I just want to go through it and go through the features again and have a look and really put it through its paces because this is a really good printer. And also because it's an eco tank machine, the ink costs are considerably lower. Now, as always, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Just hit that subscribe button below. Also give us a thumbs up as well. Really helps us on YouTube um, with our rankings, etc. And also, if you're looking for some paper, please don't forget to use the discount code that gives you 15% off Photospeed papers on photospeed.com. Now the voucher code is FSYouTube15. So just use that in your shopping cart and it'll give you 15% off. Okay, so let's get started. Let's dive into the ET8550. Now, before I actually dive into kind of the print quality and things, I just wanna go through some of the features on this printer as well. Like I said, it is a eco tank system. So it has refillable cartridges, which you can access um, and you just fill up with the Epson bottles. Like I said, it usually works out, depending on where you get it, hopefully through the PhotoSpeed website. Um, it usually works out about 20 pence per mil. Now that is a massive saving. If you think the equivalent of the P700, you'd be looking at over a pound per, per mil. Now, the downside, or you could say a downside, possibly, to this printer, is it uses dye inks. So they're not gonna be fully archival, and if you're looking to sell your work and classify it as fine art prints or G-clay prints, then you would need to probably look at the P700 or 900 if you wanted to print A2, because dye inks aren't classified generally generally, I have to say, as fine art prints because they haven't got that archivability. But saying that, these inks will probably last a good 40, 50 years um, in the right conditions, if they're stored in a box under your bed, etc., and things like that. In museum conditions, I believe Epson say. So they will last a while. And also a plus side for using dye inks is if you're using, say, gloss or luster or brighter type of papers, the colours will look a little bit more vibrant. And that's just a really nice byproduct of using dye inks. Now also, usually with dye ink printers, because we've only got six inks here, they fall down a little bit when they come to print black and white. Now in my previous video, I did test this and actually it was really impressive, but I'm gonna really put it through its paces in this video as well. Now, this actually has a gray ink as well, which will really help to give those really neutral black and whites. And also, it does have a matte black, or a, a black ink, they call it, which, as I understand, is a pigment base. Now, hopefully it will use this on the matte papers as well, so we actually get a richer black on matte papers, because usually with dye-based machines, they do fall down a little bit when it comes to matte papers. But we're gonna be testing all this as well. So, in paper, actually, it's a really great little printer. It's gonna be cheap to run, it's got a scanner built in, which is just at the top here. It's also got a back feeder, so you can put thicker papers in as well. But also, it's really nice. It's really nicely built. It's quite nice and small. I've been sat here with a Pro 1000 from Canon on my desk, and it's absolutely massive. And I have to say, when I moved it to put this on to do this video, I have to say I'm really happy that this printer is here because it's nice and small, I've got loads of room and it's great. Not really about the print quality and things like that, but just a little note to say, yeah, 
maybe maybe Canon should shrink things down a little bit. Anyway, back to Epson. Now, really nice little screen on the front of it as well. Really does a nice job. Um, you've got uh, copy, print photo, scan, and things like that. All lovely options there that you can go through. All touch sensitive, really great. Another little great little feature is it's got an output tray here. Now this drops down and when we print, this comes out as well, which only a little small thing, but makes a difference for me. I really kind of quite like that, that it's on a motor and goes in and out. I don't know why. It has no bearing on anything, print quality or anything at all. It's just quite nice and it looks pretty good when it does it. So that's one thing. So let's have a look, dive into this printer and let's have a look at actually what it prints like, because that is the main thing. We want to see how this printer handles different types of papers and if we can get some really good prints about it as well. Because like I said, I've been impressed with it. So let me see if I'm still impressed with it and we'll go back and have a look. Now, before I dive in, there has been on my last video some comments about some banding issues that these printers have had. Now, I'm gonna try, if I can, to try and make it do it, if possible. When I've had these printers on test from Epson, I personally haven't seen these issues. So I just want to see if I can kind of see any of this as well. So hopefully we can get around this. But like I said, I haven't been able to do it myself. It may have been a bit of a dodgy batch or something. I'm not sure. I haven't obviously talked to Epson about that or anything. So we'll see. But hopefully all those issues have been resolved now. Now we're 18 months on down the line. Okay, so let's get some prints off it and we'll have a look. Okay, so the first picture I've picked is a really bright and vibrant flower, effectively. Loads of colours going on in there. So hopefully this will give me a really good idea of how the printer reproduces colour. Also on here, I have a kind of landscape, a bit of a contrasty colour landscape as well. So that should be quite nice. I just want to see what's in the shadow details and things in there. And also really nice kind of subtle, nice tones in here with a lot of detail in the rocks and things like that. So hopefully those will give me a bit of a kind of a good balanced view of what's going on. Now I'm going to print some black and white as well. I've got a lovely black and white here um, of this lovely tree in this lake here. I might just do a few edits. I might just bring this up very slightly in here. But also I've picked this portrait here with the lines on it because actually I thought actually, it's a nice black and white. It's quite contrasty, but actually the lines in here will give me a good idea of the sharpness of the head and kind of how sharp and how refined the DPI and the dot grain and things are, possibly. So have a look. Then I've got this lovely picture of a flower here, lovely gray tones in here. So this is why I've picked this. We've got a really deep black, lovely kind of gray tones all the way through, and it's really sharp as well. So hopefully we'll get some lovely pictures from that as well. Okay, so let's start with this flower image and we'll just get printing. Now, I should have added that I've also made custom profiles for all the color images in here. Also, I'm going to be using the black and white mode from Epson, the advanced black and white mode to print the black and white images as well. So hopefully that will give me a little bit more neutral prints. As in a previous video I did with the 700 and Pro 300 from Canon, I did see that the advanced black and white mode did give better results. But at the end, I will print also using a profile just to see which one's more neutral. I'm expecting that the Epson Advanced Black and White mode will be a little bit more neutral. Perhaps not to our eye, but when we look at it a little bit closer, probably. But let's have a look and see. Let's just get these printed and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got all these prints printed now. So let's start with the colour images first. Now, here they all are. So it took a while to come off the printer. It's not the fastest printer in the world, but I have to say, I am really impressed still with the quality of the images. They're fantastic. The colours are amazing to start with. They look great as well. Now, and then compared against the matte paper we have here, there is very little fall off actually. The dyeing is working really well in here. Um, 
The colors are gray. I can't see any of that banding that people have talked about, to be honest, on any of these prints I've printed. So maybe I've just got a good model here or a good example. Um, but hopefully Epson have sorted that problem out. Um, and also on the brighter here as well, great. Looks fantastic, looks brilliant. I mean, between the, I've done this on the NST bright white, the matte paper here and the brighter, there is very little difference. Um, the contrast is nice, it's held the detail in there and it looks great. Now, if we look at the next image we did, which was the kind of the, the landscape here, the scene, the sky looks great. The gradients look really nice in there. And this is on the luster here and everything looks really nice. You've got a lot, nice little bit of shadow detail in there and it's done a really nice job. Now again, on the matte paper, again, looks great. Absolutely fantastic. It's really held that. Shadow details look great as well. So also I did it on the brighter as well and looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm just really impressed actually. This printer is going doing a really nice job. Color rendition is great, be it on matte or on the luster papers and looks fantastic. So let's move on to our last color, color image, which was the flower here. Now, there's quite a lot of kind of white space in here and I can't see any marks left by the rollers or anything in here, so that's fantastic. The colors as well are really nice, really saturated, really kind of rich colors, which kind of I'd expect from a, a dye machine. And it looks absolutely great on the um, brighter here. So also on the matte, the NST bright white, I think this was as well, looks absolutely great. It's really held up. The detail is fantastic and it has done a fantastic job on those matte papers. So I'm really impressed. Um, I'm, I'm almost a little bit shocked a little bit by how good this printer was because it's been a while since I've had one here and actually been able to, to use it and the quality it produces, it did actually shock me a little bit when it came out of the printer, which was great. I, that's a really good sign if I kind of think, wow, okay, that's done a really fantastic job. I mean, to be honest, I think it's almost, I wouldn't say quite, but almost equal to the 700. But I am going to do a little bit, another video on that. Put the P700 and the 8550 side by side and have a little bit of a shootout. But that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. But at the minute, really impressed with it. I'm still impressed with it from my first video I did. So let's look at the black and white images now. And this is where I've had a little bit of, I wouldn't say trouble, but a little bit of, a little bit of a question because I use the advanced black and white mode for these. Now on the NST bright white, everything appeared great. So I had in the sky here a lovely gray, but the problem came just in the detail, in like the shadow detail down the bottom of this picture here of the tree, that it just appeared a bit green to me. So it's not quite working as well as it should be in there. So it just, I can just see a little bit of green and almost a little bit of magenta just in here. So it's not quite neutral as I'd like it to be. Now on the brighter paper, using the same settings, just set it to um, semi-gloss for the brighter and you're still using the advanced black and white mode, I can definitely see down the bottom here in the shadow areas here, I can definitely see a magenta tone. So not quite a neutral print. However, I did print this one again using the custom profile and this is on the brighter here and actually it's lovely and neutral. So it has come out really nice. I think on this printer, especially with black and white, I would advise to get a custom profile made and use that. For some reason, the advanced black and white mode just isn't quite working as well as it should be on, on the EcoTank system here. So use a custom profile with your black and whites and you should be absolutely fine. It's doing a really nice job with that gray ink. 
The same really with, with the other black and whites we printed as well. Now I have the flower picture here. Again, on the brighter it came out a little bit magenta and there's something going on in the black up here as well, which I'm not too kind of, it's almost a little bit of cyan going on in there, which I'm not too happy about. And that was using the advanced black and white mode. And then, I mean, you can probably see it on camera, the difference between the two. This one is really green, which is on the NST bright white. Then you've got the magenta of the brighter, again, using the advanced black and white mode. However, when again, I printed it using a custom profile, we got a lovely neutral print. So absolutely fantastic there. So again, use the custom profiles with your black and whites. Now, the last one I did was the kind of zebra pattern, should I say, I'll put both of them up so you can see. Now, I have to say, really nice. I mean, it's done a really nice job. I can still see a little bit of magenta in the brighter and a little bit of green in the NST bright white. So again, still the same problem, but it has done a really nice job. It's nice and crisp and sharp and it looks fantastic. Again, though, print it with the custom profile, comes out lovely and neutral. So always recommend a custom profile with it. Like I said, I'm always shocked when I've got this printer out in the box and the quality it can produce. I think with a good custom profile and a little bit of work because of just a little bit of tweaking and things. So this doesn't limit you because of the use of dye inks and it's only got six colors as well, which could limit you a little bit. However, it's a great printer. It does a fantastic job. And every time I get one of these out of the box and put it on my desk and print with it, I'm always impressed with what comes out of it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. And hopefully a little bit of a revisit of this printer and what it can actually do. Like I said, I'm a real big fan of this printer. Um, and I'm gonna put it side by side by the P700 coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we can have a little bit of a shootout between the two because since making my first video, the price has come down on both of the printers quite a bit, to be honest. So they're both kind of roughly the same price now, around that 600 mark. It fluctuates all the time. So please, please check our website for the actual prices on the day. So you've kind of got a choice. You can either go down the pigment route with the P700, or you can go down the eco tank route with the dyes in here. You can save yourself some ink in the long run and go down that route and actually, I'm really impressed with the prints. I'm really interested to see putting these two printers side by side. So watch out for that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, as always, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and also give us a thumbs up if you like that video. And also, if you're getting a new printer or you've got a printer already and wanna save some money on some paper, please don't forget to use that voucher code FSYouTube15 it gives you 15% off photo speed papers on photospeed.com. Now, until next time, bye bye.